we built this custom powered stand for the Acetec Forte wheel right here that we're gonna be doing a giveaway on. Let's show you guys the build process and how we use pieces from Joe Rogan's sim that were left over to create this entire wheel right here. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so I wanna use as many pieces from Joe's rig as possible. And typically we don't really have leftover pieces because we powder coated Joe's rig. We got everything together and how we did it with the flight package, we actually ended up having a couple extra pieces, which are actually right here. So, we have these two pieces, they're kind of leftovers, test pieces, whatever. It's that same gray. And I'm thinking that we mount it dead center. And of course we'll have a power, uh, a powered wheel holder here that this would clip onto. And then really I just got to figure out how to, as clean as possible, run the wires through and then make it so you could set it, you know, next to your monitor on your desk, power it through the PC so you can get all the software and change the colors of the LEDs and stuff. Let's uh, bring this back to a workbench and see what we can come up with. Hunter, do you know where the powered wheel holders are? There was a box of them, the ones that I used to power Joe's wheel. Yeah. Do you know? Have you seen them? Yeah, they're like that, but they, yeah. you know, they've got the USBs on the back. I just saw them yesterday. Oh, you did? It's yeah. good. Yeah. Let me so we had Aztec make us um, here. Let me show you. Let me get a little. So these are 3D printed that we'll put like on the side of the monitor stand to be able to hold the wheels for a lot of our customers that have multiple wheels. We had Aztec design us um, steel ones that also have the power ability and data ability. So you'll run the power, you'll run the USB, and then you could hook it to the Aztec um, race hub software and be able to control the wheel. Um, so that's what we're looking for right now. They don't actually, it's not a product that's for sale or readily available, but we just had them custom make us, I don't know, a dozen or so. And of course we used four on Joe's rig. So right now, um, we've been organizing inventory, getting more inventory, moving shelves around. So stuff like this can sometimes get misplaced because it's not really a priority or not inventory part. So we just got to look through. See if we can find them. If you guys didn't see, we did a uh, full warehouse tour. So if you're curious about everything back here, we did a full kind of in-depth video on it. The monitors, the wheelbase, everything you guys could want, that's there. We're gonna vlog style this one. We're just gonna kind of be hanging around the warehouse, showing you guys us building this uh, a little more in-depth. One thing we forgot to show in our warehouse tour is our PC section. We have all of our custom built PCs over here that are going out with the rigs. So we missed showing you guys that. There's a little preview. Let's go find this thing then. <laughs> Maybe come through this one. Clear, think we'll clear a little bit and zoom down. The, the powered ones that we use for Joe's rig, there was a box of like five or six. Those were the unpowered ones? No, we need the powered ones. Okay. I have um, some powered ones, but I, I have seen them. You don't need to go find them, I just want to know if you've seen them. I have not seen them. Okay, don't no. worry. We'll find them. I wish it had turn signals, but we should maybe do a retrofit kit on this thing. Man, you trying to make a Hollywood debut, bro. Man. All right, it took way too long to find these, but we found them. Steel, well actually this is 3D printed, this is steel. Um, and they're made, normally if I had a motor, I guess, probably right here, come, come around here. But typically this is all that exists, right? It's just built into the motor. And so, yeah. like I explained, we had um, Acetec, if I can get this on, I'm at a weird angle. Yeah, we had Acetec make us these and so now we'll put them to good use. Now the tricky part with these and what we had with Joe's is fabbing up something that would allow for flush mounting with this wire. So I'm either gonna drill this, just like a big hole in this and just run the wire through. And then these are actually M screws. I wanna say like M3 or M4, uh, just like you'd find in some monitors. So we'll have to dig around for some hardware because you know, again, this isn't an existing product. It's just, you know, we have to work with what we got. So. We'll try to go to the uh, the drawing board here and see how to do this. And then also too, need to figure out, like I said, how we can, you know, make it as a nice little stand, kind of propped up, tilted maybe. And then uh, it's gonna be a fun project. We'll see. So we also could, so I like the flat face because you can put like decals and stuff on it. If I mount it actually like this, I could put an LED running through here. Are we giving up clearance? No, like this. Uh. See what I'm saying? Then you have the LED going through here. Mm. And then it would be easier to get the tilt because I could put corner cap right here. And it would it literally would sit like this. I could, I could put an LED in the bottom. It's so it just lights the desk. But you couldn't do an LED up here? I could do one there too. 
I could do it on both sides. All right, so for steering wheels that are not Assetek branded, they sell what is called a universal quick release, which allows any wheel and the hub with all these universal you know, mounting holes to mount up and then you can, and there's different sized hubs like this. There's a short one like this and there's a longer one in the box. So I'm thinking, should have the same four bolt pattern as here so I can use this quick release, which gives me the ability to mount this to here much easier than if I had to drill into these, uh, these M screw screw holes. Um, so I'm gonna take this apart, see if we can swap this head for this, and we'll see what happens. found a bracket that will work. However, I gotta modify it. These uh, little slots here are not thick enough. So I'm gonna put this right here. A little toasty. Let's go test. Should be good. We fit. If it fits, it ships. So we're gonna use these top two holes here, mock it up, so I'm gonna have to take this back off, actually put bolts going through the other side. Okay, so we got one in, let's see if we can get both in. All right, so that's gonna work for us, which is perfect. Now I just need to do this, or actually probably use the small one so it doesn't stick out too far. We're going to put this on here like so. These number four Allen heads back in. So, in the fab world, one of my favorite things to use, some people shit on it, some people don't, is JB Quick Weld. While we're working on this, my car's in the background getting an oil change, so hopefully there's nothing wrong while it's up there. If you hear noises, it's probably from my car. It is loud. It's great. Chandler did run into it. He was getting his Performante oil change yesterday. He ran into some problems, but we'll get those figured out. I think something's not plugged in. I'm not gonna point any fingers, I'm not gonna name any names, but someone, He basically has no ALA and hasn't since he had the car. Someone did not plug in what I, I, I hoping actually this is the issue that we didn't plug in an ALA module and I say we, someone. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> All right, so this bracket is not wide enough to be able to get two bolts in there. So we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board. Again, we had to do this four times for Joe's rig to get these powered wheel holders. And really it's just due to the dimensions of these I and mean, how they're spaced out with the available available hardware we have. So we completely fabbed up like this whole sheet metal ordeal where we over to screw from the back and then bolt that sheet metal to a piece of extruded like this. Um, now we can't do that on this wheel holder because um, we don't have a rig and it's not a large enough surface area to hide everything that we would need to to do that. So what I'll likely do, which would be the easiest is um, plan A, which is just drill a hole through the extruded, we'll mark it, and then drill the screw holes and run them all the way through the extruded, which would be the safest option. It's just um, drilling that big of a hole through aluminum um, isn't that fun. Okay, I, we you probably saw just before where this wasn't going to work. I just got excited because these, let's see, Two of these might be the perfect diameter for this bracket here. So, I'm gonna take this apart real quick. I gotta find a number two and a half, maybe? And what's funny about this, guys, is you get to see behind the scenes of some of this stuff, right? This is just a small aspect of a powered wheel holder. Now, imagine this times 100 for a full sim simulator. Now, of course, we've got a lot of this stuff figured out. Like, in this video, we're gonna be R&Ding you know, what's the best option for to build this completely custom wheel holder. But there's a lot of that, especially on these more expensive rigs. What people don't understand is, you know, we don't just buy products and slap them on a piece of metal and call it a racing simulator. We go through this process on everything, whether it's mounting pedals, adjustable pedals, pedal sliders, wheel decks, 
for shifters, having shifters with a flight joystick and getting the ergonomics correct and the adjustability correct so they don't impede on each other. There's a lot of that stuff, so. This one's a little stuck. Come back to that one. It's a moment of truth before we have to start drilling. Got two holes beautiful we might have to bore one of them out because the dimensions i don't know if you guys can see this it's almost there like the dimensions of this uh or circumference rather is perfect but the dimensions of the spacing of the holes are a little off but we can work with that just throw a drill bit through there widen it up a little bit and we'll be able to make that work and the cool thing that, about this is because this is beveled i'll be able to hide these screws so that i can flush them out some things um, and everything should fit together nicely. So we're on uh, maybe third, fourth iteration of uh, figuring out which bracket we're gonna use to be able to uh, then bolt this somewhere, but this looks very doable. <laughs> exactly what we wanted. It just, you know, got to hear the bells. Of the <laughs> I, I closed, closed my eyes, so I didn't see anything. I looked away. Uh, by the way, I wasn't looking either. I, was, I, was shooting my <laughs> I thought they just shot up at you. I'm gonna have to sand this down a little bit, so. It's got a, a little knife edge there. All right, now that I've cut this in half, I'll discard this. I can bolt this to this bracket, and then this bracket will bolt on this side to this, like so. We have our fabbed bracket. Now, once we get it all done, we're gonna sand these edges down, we're gonna paint it. Um, but I've got a good mock-up now, so now I have plenty of mounting options to be able to mount this to this pieces of extruded. So I'll have to drill, like a mark, a sharpie, drill. Then we have our tap set, we'll have to tap to make the threads. And uh, should be good. I'm just trying to figure out now that we're close to really mounting this thing onto the piece of extruded you know making sure if I want to do this length if we want to cut it how we want to do that but that'll be the easy part we kind of have the hard part down right now Let's see what do you think Gary um, if you mount it like that you could put logos on the side yep and like we like we talked about we can do a little LED integrated LED that's shining on like the desk wherever it's gonna go and they probably want like probably an angle like this. To me, it needs to be smaller because it's going on a desk. A lot of people have people don't have a ton of desks. Okay, so what do you think? I think you cut that in half. Cut it in half? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we still could put a little P1 on there. Fresh cut, we'll have some nice black plastic caps that will go on here and kind of cover it all up, make it look nice, add a little uh, dimension to it. So. Theoretically, you could make two of them, but you know. Maybe if this goes well. Yeah. You guys have an interest in this. This seems more it's like, deskable, if, yep. if that's a word. Um, now, we got to measure for the center. We got a mark for drilling center punch here where I'm going to push down and this thing will snap it's actually pretty sharp and we'll make a indent I've got two light markings that we made you probably can't see on camera but once I'm done with this you'll be able to see and then we'll do one right here and now you can see now I can get a small drill bit drill it out get a bigger drill bit drill it out and then we'll tap. All right, so I've got the first bolt in, putting the second one on. Got our drills, our holes drilled and the extruded. It's a little tight with these bolt heads. So the first one I was able to actually ratchet in. This one I might need to find a smaller bolt for. All right, so I've got the wheel mounted on. And I've got a few kind of ideas here. Because there's so much weight with the wheel and the quick release, it's hard to actually get it to suspend. You need a lot of weight in the back. So I'm thinking we'll just leave it desk mounted with the front of the wheel on the desk. Keep this in the back, but I've got little rubber feet here. I can put two little rubber feet up, which will prop it up a little bit. And it could just chill on someone's desk like this. And then I'm gonna integrate this wire here 
nice and clean either under or around so you won't really see it um, and then we just got to figure out if we want to add LEDs and little P1 decals back here but it's pretty cool I mean it's pretty uh, homemade jerry rigged as you guys saw but you know, that's the, the beauty of it it's because it's using the pieces uh, from Joe's rig little extra brackets we had and uh, the wheel that we used to configure his rig our house wheel so we'll see I'm gonna think on it for a few play around with little feet little ways that we can prop it up make it look a little bit more fit and finished but so far happy so let me show you what happens when we plug it in does this little startup sequence here I'm gonna set the camera here And then if you download the Race Hub software, you'll be able to change all the colors of these LEDs and stuff. All right. All right, so, like I said, tested the little feet out. I was grabbing different products, and I think that these little feet, which go on the bottom of the racing simulators. So we have a box of all of Joe's spare parts that we didn't use. So his has motion, so it doesn't get rubber feet, because the whole chassis like this, if you didn't have actuators, would sit on these rubber feet. So... We've got the leftover from Joe's rig because it was a motion system and didn't get these. And so we will put these right here. And you get a number five Allen key. Screw that on nice and tight. And then push these on tight. So all we have left to do is finish up our cut area. So sand them down a little bit with a Dremel. Get those painted. Touch up some of the little scraps, scra scraps and scratches from uh, just this being used brackets and stuff that we had laying around from our R&D stuff. And then we'll route the wire nice and clean out the back. And that way you guys can set it, whoever wins. Put it on the desk, plug it into your computer or MacBook even. So I plugged into our MacBook Pro here, not thinking if it would work or not. Um, and it does, it stays on. So if you have a PC, and I believe it might be compatible with Windows, but we'll put maybe down in the comments or when you guys win, we'll give all the instructions. Download Race Hub, like I mentioned before, and all of these you can change the color of. You can get the tachometer to light up, all these flag lights. Um, so you can make it super, super colorful. And uh, you know, if you got a theme going on, like say at your gaming desk or whatever uh, it may be, you can uh, you know get it all color coordinated. So, anyways, I'm pretty happy with it. Hope you guys are too. I think it's pretty cool. Again, just some cool leftover pieces from Joe's rig and. It's gonna be awesome. Man. In honor of Joe Rogan's sim, we're gonna be doing a giveaway of an Aztec Forte wheel with a custom built stand that you could put on your desk that is actually powered for this Aztec Forte wheel. So when we go ahead and slide this on, you can see it actually powers up. And so you can have this on your desk displayed. And these pieces on the back are actually made leftover parts from Joe Rogan's sim. Now, again, if you actually have your own sim set up and rig and you have a compatible wheelbase for this steering wheel, you can actually use this wheel yourself or you can just keep it as a display piece if you do not have a rig. So the rules for this giveaway are very simple. You just have to one, subscribe to YouTube channel, Podium One Racing. Number two, follow us on Instagram at Podium One Racing as well. And then number three, leave a comment on the post that's up on the screen that's gonna be on our Instagram page and tag two friends. And that is it. And we'll pick the winner in one month's time.